But I don't like looking weak in front of other people, especially after I already got a little bit hysterical earlier. Should Janet ask Raphael for help? Well, uh, to be fair, he does seem like the kind of guy who'd, uh, be at least slightly fair about it. Yeah, see that? I noticed that line. I know the first time there was like a straight line and there was only two missing. <laughs> I just completely didn't see it. So at least this time I did. Is getting to like, no is easier? Ah! Oh, oh fuck, it's the other way around! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, for fuck's sake, I'm such a cunt sometimes. Oh. Ah! Oh, fucking hell, we got there eventually. Alright, so let's click on yes, because I feel that Raphael is um the kind of person you should like. Out of all the people here, because obviously you've always got certain types of characters. So you've got the evil wanker, the neutral one, the good one, and the wacky one. So, you know, the nice one? Usually nice, yes. He is a sweetheart, after all. He won't laugh, I reach my hand out to him. Help me up? Um, okay. <laughs> He's slightly taken aback. But when I pull on his arm, he stumbles forward, dropping me back onto the bed and almost falling there himself. Oh god. S sorry No, no, that was my fault. He distangles himself from me and looks away while I straighten out my skirt. That wasn't the most... Let's just say he looks attractive from slightly far away. As soon as he got in close, that was slightly odd. I should have warned you, I'm not very strong. Yeah, you could have said. If you really need help, I should get one of the others. No, it's alright. Let's try it like this. I stand up and then you take my hand. I get to my feet a bit cautiously, but everything appears to be working. Still, it's probably a good idea to have help going downstairs. The boys, minus Bradley, are gathered in the main hall. Alvin leads against a pillar, looking unconcerned. Nathaniel appears to be more agitated, pacing back and forth in a small pace. As for Linz, he's looking up at the stairs. At us. Oh, God. As Raphael and I take steps on the seats on the steps, he begins. <coughs> I feel I need a megaphone, really, for this. As you all know, there are force fields around all the doors and windows, preventing anyone from leaving the house. There is also a force field preventing us from turning off the power manually. Nathaniel frowns at that. Get on with it. <laughs> well, unpatient crowd. <clears throat> all is not lost. I have set up a process which will build up power until it finally burns itself out completely. How long will it take? Approximately four days. I'm not going to like that, am I? Four days? Please don't start screaming again. You can't expect me to stay here for four days. Oh, okay, Janet. Well, j just think of something else then. That'll go fine. <laughs> Idiot. I'm afraid the decision is out of your hands. No one is getting out or in. Again, the way he's looking is slightly odd. What about food or water? And toilet paper. We'll take inventory of what we have on hand and plan accordingly. The water, at least, still seems to be coming through. Also, we should feed Bradley. Do we have to? Alvin is such a cock. We can't starve him for four days. We can't leave him locked in a room either. Everyone turns to stare at me. Think about it, he'd have to use the bathroom. Bad for the floors. Well, I mean, like, I don't like Alvin. I'm coming around to his way of thinking. So, what would we propose we do with him? Me? I believe that's what I asked. Well, do you have a bedroom with en suite? <laughs> Not even letting him go. It's just like, ah, uh, well, on second thoughts, he was a bit of a cock. Harris is not. <laughs> wow. Not that I'm willing to allow him into. What about the upstairs bathroom then? It's big enough. So you're going, not going to insist that we let him out. I don't know if he's crazy, or you are, or both, but he's the one who had the gun. Arguing to let him out wouldn't do any good. Bradley knows that. They're not going to trust him and maybe they're right. But even if they're wrong and Bradley's right, arguing with them would just get me locked up too. Nathaniel claps his hands together lightly to draw her attention. How posh is that? It's like, come on, fellows. Chop, chop. Oh, dear. I believe we have a plan. Linz, remove everything from the upstairs bathroom that we might need or that might be dangerous. Well... Anything with pipes, metal, anything which might cause splinters, wood, uh, the bath. That could be quite heavy if someone to pick it up and throw it. You need to be Hulk, but, you know, 
<laughs> one step at a time. He's not going to be left with a lot. Alvin, go around the house checking anything that might be in limited supply, such as soap and toilet paper. Take a tally of what's available. Raphael, I need you in the kitchen. Work out what food we have and how best to make it last. Then find Bradley something to feed. Wait, no, no, that's not what it said at all. Then find something to feed Bradley. Got it. When that's done, we can move him to the other room. What should I do? If you could, perhaps help Raphael in the kitchen. I was just about to say at the summary of all this, that's the one thing I don't want to do. <coughs> oh, no. We've already established I know nothing about the kitchen. And for a girl, that's quite pathetic. Hey! Right, moving on. <laughs> okay. I have 70% of my viewers are girls. Perhaps that wasn't the most intelligent thing to say. <laughs> oh dear, they all know I'm joking. I wonder what Nathaniel will be doing. Being in charge, I suppose. No one's complaining. We're all locked in here for four more days. We have to work together. Okay, so... Seven hours? Oh no, an hour's passed. Okay, be quiet already. We fed you, didn't we? Am I now seeing Alvin or am I here? Let me out of here! Not happening. The boys have moved Bradley from bedroom to bathroom, as planned, but he is not appreciating it. I've got to find out what's going on! May I tell him? Alvin just shrugs at me. Do whatever you want. He walks off, leaving me alone with Bradley. Well, alone with the bathroom door. We tried Lynn's idea with the shielding, but nothing happened. We can't get through the force fields and we can't turn them off. How do you know they're not lying to you about that? They don't know how to get out either. We're all working together, but we're going to be trapped in here for four days. He's not going to like this. What happens then? The power overloads and shuts down. And then we all die. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of thinking positive? Did you see? Five days, five years, five people, and they never come back. There are six people in the house. Only because I was holding your hand, there, there would be five. Five times five. Four people disappear, becoming four people in a house. And we're the fifth. But what will we become? Wait, are you suggesting that one of these guys is actually your sister? <laughs> I don't know, but I need to find out. Alright, not completely ruling that out, because, you know, what happened with the royal trap, but this is very fucking unlikely. I I I'm not going to say that I don't trust Bradley, but I don't trust Bradley. I mean, who, who trusts the ginger? I don't know how to help you. I just want to go home. The only way to home is to learn the truth. I just hope it's not too late. I shake my head, forgetting for the moment that he can't see me. There's no point in continuing this conversation. Lost in thought, I walk down the hallway and turn towards the stairs, and walk into Alvin and Lynn's. Oh, sorry. Wait, were you spying on me? Of course. Well, are you satisfied? I'm not plotting to kill you all, or whatever else you think. I'm not speaking in tongues behind your back. Satisfied, for the moment. Anyone who says that with that kind of face scares the living fuck out of me. Oh, God. You're the one hiding something, not me. I don't even know your full names. Enough is enough. Come on. I march past them and snap my fingers in the air. You go, girl. Heal. Head held high, I stride into the main lobby. I don't look back to see if Linz and Alvin are following. I can hear them back there. And anyway, they're most likely to obey if I act like I expect it. Oh, my God. We're turning into a needy girlfriend. Raphael, Nathaniel, everybody get in here. We need to talk. I can't remember what it was last time. I know an hour hasn't passed. <laughs> Everyone huddles together. <laughs> like a row of dominoes. Like a row of dominoes. I want to push Alvin. <laughs> Alright. Once everything is settled, I begin. We're all going to be stuck in here together for a while, so it's only fair that we should know some things about each other. I don't know how well you guys know each other already, but I don't know anybody. And there are probably things I ought to know to stop me from sticking my foot in my mouth. So, can we please do a basic introduction? Who you are, what do you do, and is there is anything special I should know about you? I'll start. Oh, God. Hi, my name's Janet. I uh, act like a black girl. I'm, I'm, I'm very needy. Very, very needy. Um, I look 14, even though I'm 19. I'm very sweet. I never break any laws. No, no, no one does that. I, and I'm also a massive twat. <laughs> so, what about you guys? I'm 19 and I'm a freshman at Brooke. And... I might go pre-med or journalism, but I'm not sure yet. You might have noticed I don't take meat. I don't... <laughs> I don't take meat. <laughs> well, that'll be a disappointment. <laughs> God. All right. 
that she's a vegetarian, which makes me just hate her that bit more. Now you. They look at each other. That's, that's also pretty much what I said, wasn't it? When I when I did the introduction to Janet. Almost identical. I don't know what you want to know. Well, like, you and Linz, do you work for him? Are you related? No, we're just roommates. I don't have a job. How old are you? What about school? I'm 18 and I'm not in school. 18? That's a bit young. What? Why not? That is not your business. But perhaps I could... Not now. See, there you go again, hiding things. You heard him, it's none of your business. Well, what about you? What do you do? Why are you here? Maybe because I rob banks for a living. And I'm here because he is my guest. Alvin glares at Nathaniel, but cuts off from what he was doing to say. Almost definitely not the truth, then. They're just simple questions. I mean, if we're stuck here and none of you are going to be able to get to work on Monday, isn't that going to be a problem for you? There's a moment of silence. Let me guess, none of them work. That might surprise you, but I do not actually need to work. No, it uh, doesn't surprise me in the slightest, actually. I'd, I'd go as far as saying as if I expected that. I'm between jobs. I'm a free agent. I work when I choose. Well, what about schooling? I received my bachelor's degree several years ago. As did I. I dropped out. None of you have any reason to leave this house. Isn't that a little odd? We were all here when you got here, remember? That's true. Did we accidentally crush a party or something? You know, Bradley's starting to get the idea that maybe those missing girls he's talking about have somehow turned into you guys, and that's why you all live in this mysterious house. <laughs> no! No! No, that can't be true. That just sounds like complete and utter bollocks. <sighs> there really is no mystery here. Linz is here to perform work on the electrical systems. Raphael accompanied him. Albert is my guest and this is my home. Linz glares at Nathaniel. I wonder if what he just said is a lie or a truth Linz didn't want revealed. So does this mean this whole force field mess is your fault? Albert tosses his head. This is a waste of time. I don't have to stand around and listen to ask you boring questions. He shoves himself away from the wall and exits. And I have research to do, since, as you say, this is all my fault. Wait, wait for me! He starts to hurry after Linz and stops and looks at Nathaniel and then back again. I'm sorry. And then he's gone. But I want to help. Perhaps it would be a good idea if you retire for the night. You've had a very strange day. I'm sure some rest would do you good. To be perfectly honest, I'd quite like to ask, like, Alvin is still on our smiting list, don't get me wrong, because the guy's a prick, but I feel we need to ask him what he's actually doing here. Alright, fine, good night. Okay, so, five hours have passed? In the middle of the night, I was having the strangest dream. I was strapped to a table while Linz covered me with tiny suction caps. Suddenly, I heard a commotion and Bradley rushed into the room, pushing Raphael in a wheelbarrow. Okay, then. The wheelbarrow overturned, trapping Linz and Raphael underneath, and Bradley drew his sword and cut the straps that tied me down. And then we had to fight our way into the castle in time to stop Alvin from marrying Nathaniel. But there were too many guards, so we had to scare them, so Bradley set me on fire. And that's when I woke up. The house is very quiet, everyone is probably asleep. I have the whole spooky mansion to myself. This is my chance to explore. It's not, oh wow, I've already got out, okay. It's not that I don't trust them. Well, okay, it is that I don't trust them. Not completely. Why should I? They don't trust me either. They're not going to tell me everything, so I'll just have to find out on my own. In particular, what is down the basement? Probably nothing. Probably just some switch boxes and storage and things, but I'd like to see for myself. I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to touch anything that might be related to the electrical system. I just want to look. Now, the staircase is around here somewhere. Well, well, what have we here? 